Hi everyone. The Maritime Museum of Germany, known as the Deutsches Schiffers Museum, is situated in Bremerhaven along the banks of the Weser River. Positioned as a prominent city attraction, this museum boasts a compelling exhibit, the meticulously preserved cog ship from the year 1380, originally discovered in Bremen back in 1962. The Hanseatic League was a medieval commercial and defensive confederation of merchant guilds and market towns in Central and Northern Europe. Growing from a few North German towns in the late 12th century, the League expanded between the 13th and 15th centuries and ultimately encompassed nearly 200 settlements across seven modern-day countries, ranging from Estonia in the north and east, to the Netherlands in the west, and Krakow, Poland, in the south. The League originated from various loose associations of German traders and towns formed to advance mutual commercial interests, such as protection against robbers. These arrangements gradually coalesced into the Hanseatic League, whose traders enjoyed toll privileges and protection in affiliated communities and their trade routes. Economic interdependence and kinship ties between merchant families, who held important positions in towns, led to deeper political integration and the removal of obstacles to trade. Hanseatic cities gradually developed common trade regulations. The Hanseatic League used several types of ships that sailed overseas and on rivers. The most emblematic type was the cog. Knowing great diversity in construction, it was depicted on Hanseatic seals and coats of arms. By the end of the Middle Ages, the cog was replaced by other types like the hulk, which later gave way to larger carvel types. The Bremen cog stands as the most impeccably preserved medieval merchant vessel globally. The unearthing of the shipwreck in 1962 within the Visa River was nothing short of astounding. The wooden remnants unveiled themselves as a cargo ship hailing from the era of the Hanseatic League. Prior to this find, vessels resembling it were solely familiar through depictions on antiquated seals of the Hanseatic cities. The intricate process of salvaging the wreck in distinct segments, its subsequent restoration at the German Maritime Museum, and the years dedicated to its preservation captured international attention. Nearly four decades lapsed from the moment of discovery until the intact ship could finally grace the public within the museum's dedicated cog hall. Since its unveiling, the Bremen cog has consistently served as a subject of multifaceted maritime research. The exhibition surrounding the cog, inaugurated in 2017, presently casts the 600-year-old shipwreck in the illumination of contemporary scholarship. The exposition revolving around the cog narrates the tale of the cargo vessel and the maritime exploits during the Hanseatic era. Commanding the central space of our cog hall, the grand shipwreck, stretching over 20 meters in length and nearly 8 meters in breadth, beckons from three levels and angles. Commencing from the Bremen cog, the exhibition recounts the zenith of the Hanseatic Lee, the seafaring of the Middle Ages, life aboard such vessels, and the skirmishes against pirates. The archaeological find triggers a host of inquiries, all of which the exhibition endeavors to address, how did ship construction unfold in the Middle Ages, and what fates befell these vessels. Did the Hanseatic merchant ships venture across the North Atlantic or hug the coastline? How can the ship be conserved for posterity? Furthermore, the exhibition delves into historical perceptions of cogs about a century ago and how the cog symbol is promoted in modern times. Evidently, the ship persists as a captivating subject of ongoing investigation. The remains of the cargo ship Bremen Cog remain a focal point of study. Following the successful preservation of the cog through the use of synthetic wax polyethylene glycol, contemporary techniques for preventive conservation, such as photogrammetric analyses, are currently employed. This allows for the identification of potential wood distortions and facilitates the implementation of suitable safeguards. From 2014 to 2016, the German Maritime Museum participated in the Color and Space in Cultural Heritage Program, funded by the European Union, 
which aim to advance technologies for cultural heritage documentation. An interdisciplinary team spanning archaeology, history, and archaeozoology embarked on research between 2015 and 2018 under the Leibniz Research Initiative between the North Sea and the Norwegian Sea, interdisciplinary research on the Hanseatic League. Originating with the COG, the study expanded into medieval shipbuilding and the North Atlantic trade of Hanseatic merchants. Findings from this project have been incorporated into the novel exhibition. Another ongoing endeavor delves into the symbolic significance and visual history of COGS during the 19th and 20th centuries. Here are some lesser known facts about the Bremen COG. Name and Origin Although often referred to as the Bremen COG, the ship actually lacks an exact associated name. COG is an archaeological term used to denote medieval cargo vessels. Furthermore, it is likely that the ship was not built in Bremen but in one of the harbors of the Hanseatic cities and could have belonged to merchants from various towns. Construction Date The construction date of the Bremen COG remained unknown for a long time. However, modern research and wood analysis have determined that the ship was likely built around 1380. This makes it one of the later examples of cogs that have been discovered. Extent of voyages While most of the Hanseatic cargo vessels typically stayed within the waters of the North and Baltic seas, it is believed that the Bremen cog might have undertaken more extended voyages. Some studies suggest that it could have reached the shores of North Africa and even the Atlantic coast. Symbol of Research Throughout the centuries, the ship has served as a subject of investigation and archaeological exploration. From its discovery and reconstruction to modern preservation and interpretation techniques, the Bremen Cog has become a significant source of information about medieval maritime trade and navigation. Enduring Mystery The reason for the sinking of the Bremen Cog remains a mystery to this day. Despite its well-preserved condition, there is no definitive evidence or documentation indicating what happened to the ship before its demise. Preservation Technologies One of the most intriguing aspects of the Bremen Cog research is the utilization of advanced preservation methods. The process of using polyethylene glycol to strengthen the ship's wooden structure was innovative at the time and allowed for the preservation of a significant portion of the original framework. Influence on Research The study of the Bremen Cog has had a considerable impact on understanding Hanseatic trade, maritime activities, and culture. It aided archaeologists and researchers in gaining deeper insights into how trade and maritime connections functioned in medieval Europe. These facts underscore the significance of the Bremen Cog as a historical artifact and a research subject capable of revealing new aspects of maritime history. The ship model shown here was built from walnut and maple after plans by Heinrich Winter. It is a true masterpiece. It is 150 scale. Length is 70 cm, width 29 cm, and height 63 cm. Within the museum's architectural confines, an impressive assortment of artifacts is on display, emphasizing the evolution of naval technology and the maritime history of Germany. This collection includes intricate models, historic flags, and evocative paintings. For those seeking a scenic perspective, the museum's top floor cafeteria offers a vantage point that affords breathtaking views of the estuary where the Visa River meets the sea. There are many more models on display in the museum. The figurehead of the Corvette Elizabeth of the Imperial German Navy is an interesting piece of maritime history. The Corvette Elizabeth, launched in 1869, was named after Elizabeth Christine of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel Bevan, who was the Duchess of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel and the wife of Emperor Charles VI. The figurehead on the ship depicted the likeness of this historical figure. 
It's important to note that the choice of figureheads had historical or symbolic significance related to the ship's name and the nation it represented. The Corvette Elizabeth is a historically significant vessel that played a crucial role in Germany's maritime history. Elizabeth was constructed in 1869 and served as a corvette in the Imperial German Navy, which was established during the formation of the German Empire. This ship held strategic importance as it was part of Germany's efforts to develop its maritime presence and bolster its naval power. Elizabeth was a corvette equipped with both sails and a steam engine, making it versatile and capable of operating in various conditions. The vessel was actively used for a variety of maritime tasks, including patrolling waterways, conducting training maneuvers, and representing Germany's interests on the international stage. Throughout its service, Elizabeth have witnessed various events and changes in Germany's maritime strategy. It have participated in exercises and operations aimed at ensuring maritime routes security and protecting Germany's interests. Like many historical ships, Elizabeth can be regarded as a significant artifact of maritime history, contributing to the understanding of the evolution of maritime technologies, strategies, and Germany's role on the global maritime stage in the 19th century. On February 1, 1858, the Iron Steamer was launched in Greenock, Scotland. The official commissioning of the new Bremen reportedly turned into an impressive patriotic celebration, drawing significant attention from the population. The Bremen had a cargo capacity of about 1,000 tons. Its coal bunkers could hold 850 tons of coal. The shipyard indicated that the steam engine consumed 2.2 to 2.5 kilograms of coal per hour and per horsepower. The ship was sleekly designed like a clipper and equipped with the rigging of a bark. It featured one chimney, three masts, and had a gross tonnage of 1710 and a length of 101.46 meters. The cabins were furnished with the best comforts and exquisite taste. The first class cabin could accommodate around 60 passengers, while the second class could accommodate 110 passengers. On either side of the beautiful and spacious salon, adorned with fine furniture and medallions depicting views of Bremen, were the cozy sleeping chambers of the first class, designed for two or four people each. These chambers included clean beds, sofas, washstands, and various lockable cabinets. Both the first and second class cabins had their own smoking room for gentlemen and an elegant ladies' room. Music enthusiasts could find an excellent piano in the first class cabin. Furthermore, the ship had two bathrooms and a library. The intermediate deck was spacious, well ventilated, and designed with consideration for health, capable of accommodating a total of 401 people. Beowulf was laid down at the AG Visa shipyard in Bremen in January 1890. She was launched on November 8, 1890, named after the legendary Geatish hero Beowulf by Rear Admiral Hans von Korster. Completion took place in late 1891, followed by sea trials, and she was formally commissioned on April 1, 1892. Her inaugural captain was Captain at Sea Prince Heinrich of Prussia, who was the brother of Kaiser Wilhelm II. Her sister ships included Siegfried, Friedhoff, Heimdall, Hildebrand, and Hagen. Beowulf was armed with a primary battery consisting of three 24cm, 9.4-inch guns. Throughout the 1890s, she served in the German fleet and underwent a reconstruction from 1900 to 1902. After the outbreak of World War I in August 1914, she was assigned to the Vi Battle Squadron, but she did not engage in any combat. In 1915, Beowulf was demobilized and subsequently utilized as a target ship for U-boats.
SMS First Bismarck, also known as Prince Bismarck, marked Germany's pioneering venture into armored cruisers, crafted for the Kaiserliche Marine, or Imperial Navy, in the late 19th century. This vessel was christened in honor of the renowned German statesman Otto von Bismarck. The design of First Bismarck exhibited noteworthy enhancements compared to the earlier Victoria Louise class protected cruisers, notably, she boasted considerably greater size and more potent armament than her predecessors. Principally purposed for colonial responsibilities, the ship fulfilled her role as part of the East Asia Squadron until 1909, when she was relieved from duty and returned to Germany. Between 1910 and 1914, the ship underwent substantial reconstruction. Following the outbreak of World War I, she was briefly employed as a coastal defense vessel. However, her performance in this role proved unsatisfactory, prompting her withdrawal from active service. Subsequently, she assumed the role of a training ship for engineers throughout the war's duration. In 1919, First Bismarck was taken out of commission. The fifth passenger ship named Bremen of 1939 was a German ocean liner commissioned by North German Lloyd, a prominent German shipping company. The ship was intended to serve the transatlantic passenger route, connecting Germany with the United States. Ship Specifications the Bremen was a large ocean liner, with a length of approximately 960 feet, 292 meters and a tonnage of around 51,656 gross tons. It had a sleek and modern design, typical of the era's ocean liners, with multiple decks, luxurious accommodations, and advanced engineering. Maiden Voyage the Bremen made its maiden voyage on July 16, 1939, from Bremerhaven, Germany, to New York City. Speed and Prestige The Bremen was known for its speed and efficiency. It was considered one of the superliners of its era, capable of maintaining high speeds during transatlantic crossings. This speed was not only practical for reducing travel time but also added a sense of prestige to the ship and the shipping company. Thanks for watching.